Hey, what's going on guys? Since you're skater here, bringing you First Try Fridays episode number 23. For those of you that are new to my channel, this is a series I do every single Friday where you guys leave a comment of a class or any little setup like to me use in Black Ops 2 down below in the comments. And each and every Friday I go in, pick one of those classes randomly and use it in my first game of Black Ops 2. And I upload and commentate to the gameplay if I do either really good or really bad. And this week... The random class was class comment number 12, which actually was the last comment. And the last three actually class comments were all ballista comments. And this was suggested by Ignite My Blade, who wanted me to use the ballista with the iron sight, with the suppressor, with the executioner, with light. So I didn't really know exactly what it was saying right there. I got ballista with iron sight and with suppressor, and then the executioner. But I didn't know if I wanted suppressor with that either. So also wanted me to use lightweight toughness and dexterity with shock charge. So. It added up to like 7 points, so I just assumed that he wanted me to use the suppressor with the executioner and 2 shock chargers. And you know, the iron sight and the suppressor on the ballista as well. Because that totaled out to 10 points. So overall, I used ballista, iron sight, suppressor, execution with iron, or executioner with suppressor, lightweight toughness, and dexterity with 2 shock chargers. Just so you guys know that. When 16 and 15 overall, playing some demolition on raid. It seems like I'm actually uploading a lot of freaking raid lately. I don't know why. Especially for first try Friday since it's the first game. I don't know. I always usually get like raid slums or like something like grind. Those are, seems to be the popular maps. But um, yeah, this is actually the first time I've ever used the Iron Sight Ballista in like public matches. I've used it trying to quick scope with friends in private matches and stuff. But I, I even looked at the uh, pole sign and what are they called? The barracks for this game. I've never used the Iron Sight. And as you can see, I got the gold on the Ballista. So got the first gameplay with the gold Ballista. And first gameplay with the no iron sights. Hopefully you guys enjoy that. But now, let's get into my phone's ringing. Alright, sorry about that. But back to what I was saying. I'm kind of thinking about doing this kind of mini-series. I'm not sure if I could just do it random videos or do it the next couple first try Fridays. But I'm thinking about doing like a little tips and tricks, um, you can say, for Call of Duty and other shooters. And just some tips I got for you guys. So, what I'm sharing with you this week is ways to improve your aim in Call of Duty and every other single first person shooter and little shooters out there that you guys can do so first things first which people are always saying is one thing you have to do is pick a sensitivity so as you know in the previous call of duties specifically talking about call of duty right here sensitivities were 1 through 10 but now in black ops 2 it's 1 through 14 so for call of duty you know people like especially when i started i played like right in the middle i think i played on a five and then you know People also play on like ones and ones and twos, and people also play on nines and tens. And I was like, I always thought that playing on a higher sensitivity made you better, but that actually isn't true. If you look at the pros and MLG people, and I'm sure you've heard this plenty of times, they play on what used to be a two through five from like Modern Warfare three and previous. Those sensitivities, the lower sensitivities, and that converts over to about a three to a seven in Black Ops two right now. So the reason you want a lower sensitivity. Is because it just helps you get your aim on target. You're not jerking everywhere if you like jerk your thumb or anything. And it's a lot easier to pinpoint your thing. The only trade off is that you move around and turn a little bit slower. So that's why I kind of like to. I personally play on a 5 or a 6 on Black Ops 2 right now. Because I don't like moving super slow, but I do like having a little bit of a turning ability and also a low enough sensitivity where I can easily pinpoint my targets and just easily kill people and have my aim on target. Now, for sniping, you know, some people also think that making your higher sensitivity will make you better, especially if you're doing, well, you always want a higher sensitivity if you're going to do, like, 360 no-scopes and stuff. But if you're just going around and, like, quick-scoping, I actually, my phone goes off again, um, I actually like to keep my sensitivity lower, about a 5 to 6 right now on Black Ops 2, like I said, because it's easier to just control. Now, sometimes I'll raise it a little, maybe one or two higher than that, just to get a little more lean and sway with my sniping but that's that now for other games you know like crisis 3 you like to have a higher sensitivity because it's more action-packed more movement and like battlefield you know i kind of like it a little bit of a higher sensitivity because a little bit more chaotic so like more chaotic games you want a little bit more of a higher sensitivity but call of duty you know let's take it around for black ops 2 3 to 7 so second tip which is also very important is warm-up so it sounds a little silly but you know for sports, you're always warming up. You're either doing your stretching, you're doing a pregame or something. You know, for school, you warm up, um, study for a test. You got to study, do homework. You're always warming up for a bigger thing. Now, it sounds funny when it comes to video games, but it's actually very, very helpful, especially with my little tips. So, what I would advise you to do is actually rush. One thing is don't camp. Camping just 
is horrible all around. So what I like to do is go into a combat training game or a private match with friends, rush around with like an SMG and just run at your enemy and shoot them. Kill them as fast as possible with as few bullets, and that will definitely warm your thumbs up, warm your reaction times up, and get your aim on point. And what I also like to do is play Geometry Wars before I play Call of Duty or any shooter. And the reason for this is it especially helps your sniping because it gets your 360 motion thumb movement and it gets your reaction times ready. It's just really good before you actually play Call of Duty. Now, whoopsies, if you don't know what that is, I think it came out with the original Xbox as an arcade game, but now course it's going off again now um it's i think 800 or 400 microsoft point game it's like geometry wars 2 david torres i'll oh, put a little screenshot on the screen right now if you don't know what it is but basically you're like this little geometry figure and you go around shooting these other little geometry figures and you go in a circle get your reaction like reaction time and timing down really good before you start playing games get to that thumb motion which is very important especially if you're going to snipe quick scope do whatever that's very important and just get your aim and your thumbs like your thumbs it just warms your thumbs up basically to play a game and it really really helps out your aim so other little things that i got tactical layout if you play on default i first played on default for about basically until right before modern warfare 3 came up black ops 2 was my first cod so i played basically default all black ops 2 and then i switched to tactical layout and i had to force myself to get used to it because at first if you switch to anything at first it's very very confusing kind of weird to play with it that way but you will get used to it overall it's a lot better you lose your panic knifing abilities but your reaction time and you can drop shot easier it all becomes a lot easier and it's just all your movement basically is in those two analog sticks and it helps your aim improve especially when you can crouch and then you get the whole crouching mastery thing and it just helps out overall a lot recommend you play on tactical not default or if you like to play on any other weird sensitivity um, or layout, I guess that's fine too. But um, the other thing is TV size. If you're playing on a 60 inch TV, not that great because you have to move your head, move your eyes. If you're playing on a nice little computer monitor or I play on a 21 or 22 inch TV, you know, actually, it might be 32 inch. I'm not, actually, I think it is 32. But a smaller size TV so you don't have to move your eyes back and forth. Everything's right there. You can use your peripheral vision to see. And it just automatically it lets you see enemies easier. You can track onto them easier. Get your aim on point. That's easier. Vibration is another thing that can go into aim. I personally, one of my controller runs out of batteries. The vibration, sometimes I do better with it. Or better with it off when it's out of batteries in the controller. Because you know when your Xbox or I'm not sure about PS3 or whatever. But when your controller is low on batteries, it's just like stops using the vibration feature. So vibration, when like it vibrates, you can move your analog stick or your thumb. And then your aim could go off. I personally don't think it makes that much big of a difference. Because I kind of like my vibration. It gives me like a personal gun feel. But if that's a personal thing. And the last thing is control freaks. Oh my god, they're awesome. I know a lot of you know what they are. If you don't know, put an image on the screen right now. They're like these little leverages for your controller that make your aim a lot better. You got to get used to them. I know my friends always come over. They take it off because they hate it. It's hard to get used to at first. I personally thought it was bad. You really only need it on your right aiming analog stick. And I know, um, back to the friend thing, people that have used it and said they hated it at first, I know Mini V12 was one of them. He used it at first, didn't like it, then I let him borrow it and he won't give me it back now because he loves it. And it's just awesome. The thing helps your aim tremendously. They have different sizes from like little short stubs that can extend your thumb a little bit up to like these giant sniping ones that raise them like an inch off. And they just really help your aim overall. So if you don't have those, I really suggest you invest into them they're like 10 to 15 dollars right now you can buy them i know gamestop's actually starting to sell them you can buy them on the site buy them on amazon they're really helpful to your aim so that's all the tips i got for you for aim hopefully you guys will maybe learn something or if i miss something let me know your little tips you got for me let me know if you guys want me to continue this little kind of call of duty first person shooter tip series i can do it either every first try fridays from now on or do them like kind of here and there or maybe, I don't know what the heck's going on. But make sure you leave a comment for next week's First Try Fridays. And as always, I'm Sinister Skid. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out.